This is everything you need to know about fixing a flat tire. Hi, I'm Jason with The Co-op. And as bike riders, we all get flat tires at some point. So whether you're new to riding or whether you just want a refresher, uh, I want to go over from start to finish everything it takes to fix a flat tire like this one. So you can have the confidence when you go out for a ride um, to be able to deal with it yourself if it happens to you. So fixing a flat is basically involves three different steps, getting the wheel off of your bike, uh, fixing the flat or changing your tire if that's what you're up to, and then putting that wheel back on your bike. The back wheel with the cassette and the chain definitely makes that more involved than the front wheel, uh, but I'm gonna show you how that works so that you'll be able to do it yourself. So the basic and minimum tools you're gonna need if you have a spare tube to go in your tire, uh, then you're gonna need a pump to pump it back up. Uh, if this is all that you have, you can actually get away with this in almost every case. I'm gonna show you a cool trick to how to get your tire off of your wheel without levers, but levers are helpful and you might also need these levers to be able to get your tire off of your wheel. And you may or may not need a bike multi-tool, basically a bike tool with Allen keys on it, possibly to remove your wheel. I'll show you an example of that. And if you're gonna fix your flat, you're gonna need a patch kit. It's easier to start by just flipping your bike over so that it's on its handlebars and its seat, just gives you better access to the wheels. I'm gonna start with the front wheel. I'm gonna actually flatten this tire with this pin, uh, just so that I have a good demonstration of looking for the hole and wondering where it is and not knowing exactly where it is. Here we go. I'm just gonna continue on with the demonstration while that flattens itself, basically. I need to remove this wheel from the bike. And this one has a through axle. You can see it right here. I'm just gonna spin that thing pull the axle out. And so that way, once this axle is out, it can just be lifted out of place. And this is a good time to mention, this has disc brakes, and I definitely do not want to touch either of these disc brake uh, handles. You do not want to collapse those things because this disc brake, these pads will come together inside there and you won't be able to get those apart and get your wheel back in. Anytime you remove a bike with disc brakes like this, Make sure and not touch the levers. Don't depress the brake levers while, while your wheel's not in. Oh yeah, that's getting flat already. I just took one little pinhole. So I have the front wheel off and I'm gonna go about fixing that in a minute, but I wanna demo for you the other types of uh, attachments. Here's the quick release. And that just needs, that lever needs to be flipped up. And then the nut on the other side needs to be held while you can kind of spin this loose. There it is. This is also a through axle bike and the through axle is here, but there's no lever on it. So I'm going to have to use an actual Allen key. Spin that, remove the axle. And then that's also just sitting in its dropouts and it can be lifted out just like that. I think it's it stays before, but I actually meant dropouts. Basically that's just the slot that the wheel axle kind of rests in so that it stays in the right spot all the time. All right, we've got the front wheel off. Um, you may not have to remove both wheels. I'm just demonstrating now. So whether you have a through axle or a quick release, doesn't really matter. Um, the back wheel is gonna be basically the same, something to think about. And that is where the derailleur sits. I don't wanna mess up the derailleur any more than I have to. So I just wanna show you the simple thing about, you're going to shift this chain to the lowest cog down here. And basically in profile, what that does for you is it gets the chain as far out of the way of, for changing this tire as possible. So we're gonna shift it all the way down there. I also want you to notice how I don't shift any gears without actually pedaling. That's important, you don't wanna just grind away at the gears in the back. So make sure you're pedaling while you're shifting, it makes a big difference. And what I want you to pay attention to when I'm pulling this thing out of here, I'm unwinding my through axle. Pulling my through axle clear out, there it is. The wheel can still spin, it's sitting in its dropouts, the same as before. But what I wanna do and what I wanna show you is that I'm just gonna pull back on that thing and you see how this has the ability to come straight out of its dropouts now. And this is what I want you to pay attention to. You pull back on the derailleur right there and you've gotta get a cleaner shot to get your wheel out. And when we're putting it back in, this is exactly, we're just gonna do the exact opposite when we're putting it back together. So. This is the best thing to pay attention to for the back wheel. This is kind of what demystifies what can be a difficult thing, but I'm just gonna lift that up. There it is. 
I just want to make note of where that is. So when I let go of the derailleur and it kind of moves forward, I can just pull that clean out of the chain and then I have my back wheel ready to go. I'm going to set these parts of the bike out to the side and we're going to fix that flat that I made a little while ago. Okay, the big part here is we have to remove this tire from the rim. And that's kind of the big trick where we end up often talking about using levers to do that. But there's a trick that you might not need levers. Let me show you that. And if that doesn't work, a little lever help at the end is actually what gets you there. First part of this trick is to actually push that tire, clear it from the rim all the way around. I've been working on this tire, so it's already freed up on one side. But oftentimes you have to work your way around. Yeah. See on the back side? It's taking a little bit more work to kind of get it away from the rim. But I'm just doing that with my hands. So the bead, which is that smallest, hardest part of the tire that goes all the way around, that bead is now removed from the rim itself, still trapped inside the rim, but we can take that out by doing this. I'm gonna push the stem up so the where it connects to the tube itself is up inside the tire right here. Now I go along pinching the tire together so it gets to the center or smallest part of the rim. Basically I'm trying to stretch it in both directions around the rim of the wheel. I grab it in the center. You're not really stretching the tire so much as you're just getting it tight against the rim the whole way. Work it around the edges all the way down to the bottom. And I get to the bottom and voila. <laughs> I had enough stretched around that the bead was able to come over the rim without me using any levers at all. If I just try to pull that off without doing the, the stretching around work first, it is not going to come off. And that's when I might need to use a lever. So road bike tires can be notoriously hard to get off without levers. I might need levers for this one, we'll see. Got it flat. Uh, I need to work the tire away from the rim all the way around. This Presta valve has a little keeper nut on it. So to press this valve up, I'm going to need to undo this little nut right here. Then I can press that valve up and then I'm going to pinch that together. Same thing I did on the other one. This is a great, great time to show you actually how to use a lever. I've gotten as much slack in this thing as I possibly can. And I could probably using my thumbs, push this over the, push this over the edge. I can see the other part of the rim already protruding, but if I couldn't get it to this point, this is when I'm just going to use a lever and see, I've got it lined up with a spoke, get it under there. And those things will then, clip to a spoke and that'll hold itself in place. You can then run this one lever around and remove it. But if you have a second lever, it's then easy to just slide that thing around. And remove this one, slide that all the way up. And now I've got access to the tire. All right, next let's try a mountain biking tire. And I, while I have the mountain biking tire out here, I want to mention that everything we're doing right here is dealing with tubed Tires with inner tubes. A lot of mountain bikes nowadays run tubeless. Uh, tubeless is a different situation, uh, but for tubed tires, which is pretty much everything you're gonna buy off the shelf, this is how it works. So for mountain bike tires, same rules apply. Push that stem up inside. In reality, the big trick about a mountain bike tire is just getting it away from the rim, particularly on a wide rim like this one. What I'm really demonstrating here is getting the bead of the tire as close to the center of the rim as you can, because every rim has a dish in it. And by putting the bead on this side close to the center and on this side close to the center, it gets both beads into the lowest point of the rim. And as you work it around the whole wheel, that's what allows you the, the slack at the end to then lift it over the edge of the rim. Same thing. I'm going to push up on the stem, start working that toward the center. These are a lot easier to grab a hold of. See that right at the end, the bead has come off. And so I did that also lever free. Now let's get to patching that hole that we have in our, in our tire. We've got the tire off the rim. We need to remove the tube from inside, pull the stem all the way through the hole uh, in the rim. Um, if we're not gonna use a new tube, we need to patch this one. So the first step to that is finding the hole. And to do that, we're going to basically inflate this thing with air and we're going to hold it up next to our ear and listen uh, for any air leaking out. 
If you were at home or you're near a water source, you can inflate it and dunk it slowly in water and watch for bubbles coming out. But if you're on the roadside, you don't have that possibility. So we're gonna inflate it and then just slowly move it by our ear and listen for the hole. I'm holding it right against my ear because this is a tiny little pinprick of a hole and you have it right resting against your ear, you'll hear it, but I can't quite see it. So I'm going to put more air in here. I've got the general idea. It's right in here somewhere. Found the hole. I got my thumb right on it. And the trick for patching a tire and making sure your patches stick is cleaning it off and roughing up the surface. When you're out in the field, really cleaning it off isn't always an option. You don't have any alcohol. It'd be great to have alcohol wipes um, and wipe it off so that the glue sticks really well. Nearly every patch kit comes with some type of abrasive thing, like a little um, metal tab with some scouring edge to it. So like a little cheese grater, or it comes with a little piece of sandpaper. Right there, there's my little scouring, my little scouring metal piece right there. And my patches. I've got my thumb on the hole. I've got my little scouring piece and I've got my patch right there. So here we go. Let's patch this thing up. First, I'm gonna just scrape all the way around the area. Make sure I get it abraded really well. You don't want to braid through it, but you do want to chew up the rubber a little bit so the cement on the patch sticks better. I want to make sure you can see that. Once I peel the backing off this patch, I don't really want to touch the glue. You can see my fingers are not the cleanest. I definitely want to do everything I can to treat this like a band-aid for the tube and peel it away and set it on there. Once I get the peeling started, I can always use the metal tab once I start peeling that away, I'm gonna set it carefully right over the patch spot. Do my best to press out all the air. That's sticking nicely. Let me show you what that looks like. So I've got my patch on. I definitely wanna make sure I take this and put it back into my patch kit so that I have it for next time. Now it's always a good idea to test your to test your patch before you put it back onto the bike. One of the reasons I generally carry a pump um, versus a CO2 inflator is that if I do get it flat, I'm pumping up and letting air out and pumping up multiple times, and I'm not worried about conserving how much air I use to do tests and stuff like this. There's the patch. Nothing. That's working beautifully. So we can put this back in to the tire, put the tire back on the rim and put that wheel back on the bike. We've tested this, we know our patch is good, and I poked this hole into the, into the tire, so I know that there's no other cause happening. But if you have a flat and you're out on the road, you don't know what necessarily caused that. Something might have poked through and come back out, or something might have poked through and is still there. You don't wanna put this tube back into your tire only to have it flat again in the same spot, basically. So it's important to check the inside of the tire and maybe even the rim itself to see if there isn't something that's causing your flat. If you're out on the out on the trail and you don't have any other option, you can feel around slowly, slowly with your hand to kind of feel for something in there. You might not be able to feel it. I happen to have a tissue with me. It's a good idea to potentially use a tissue. Take the tissue and just run it around on the inside of your tire. If there is something sharp in there that caused your flat, it'll likely catch on the tissue or a bandana or something else you can use. Otherwise, you might have to use your hand. Just be careful with doing so. It could be a thorn from the side of the road that poked through and, and is gone and you don't have to worry about it. But if something has lodged in there, it's a good idea to check for it. Putting the tube back into the tire and back onto the wheel is a reverse of what you did before. You see there's still a little bit of air in here. I like having a little bit of air. If it's completely flat, you want even if you're using a new tube, if you didn't have a flat and you're just changing your tire or you have a new tube and you didn't want to do the, do the patching, um, you're going to want to put a little bit of air into that so, it, so it's easier to kind of fit it up in here. If this thing was flat and I tried to do this, it'd be falling out, going every which way. But with a little bit of air in there, it makes it pretty easy. So I want to line the valve up with the valve hole in the rim. And if it's already in the tire, sometimes if it's a long stem, sometimes it's difficult to get it far enough in there to get into the hole. So I might pull it a little bit out of the tire, move the tire out of the way. 
and then I can get that valve started down in there. Okay. Getting the tire back on the rim with or without levers. Same thing as we did when we were taking it off. So I'm gonna push this valve back up, pinch the center bead of the tire together to try to work it toward the center of the rim all the way around. Same thing, same thing as when I took it off. Down, and then right at the end, I can just flop it right in there and I didn't have to use levers. If you do have it too tight, you do, if your grip strength isn't there or your tire is new or somehow it's just not going on the rim, it's at that end point where you might have to just use that lever, get it under there and do the last little flip to get it inside there. So that might be necessary, but if you do this trick I showed you for a vast majority of your wheels, you'll actually be able to do it without levers, but I don't recommend going out without levers because if you really need them, um, you really need them. <laughs> Let me show you how to do that on both the road tire and the mountain biking tire. Okay, road tire, push up on the stem and get the tire seated in the middle of the rim. Pushing, see there? I could use a lever for that, but I'm just gonna keep going with my thumbs a little at a time, just rolling it, rolling it, rolling it. There it goes, mountain bike tire. This one's a little less important that I push that stem up. Oh, we're there. Oh, we're there. Look at that. Okay, back to our first tire. I'm gonna pump this thing up. Fixed. Good as new. Okay, so this is my front tire. I've got it all fixed. I'm gonna put it back in place, being careful of just slotting the disc brake rotor right into the center of those pads into his little dropout slots there so it can spin. Then put the through axle in and tighten. That's the front wheel. Let's move on and show you to reassemble that back wheel if the back wheel is where you have the problem. We're gonna take the back wheel, same thing as when we were taking it off. We're gonna move it into generally into the right position. We can see from above that these, the where the axles go are pretty much right above the slots that they're gonna drop into since we shifted all the way to the outside in the lowest cog before we started, we can take that chain and we can rest it right on that smallest cog in our cassette. And then I'm gonna pull back on the derailleur. Yeah, I'm just gonna drop that. It's gonna go into the chain below and drop right down into its spot. It doesn't have to be intimidating. It doesn't have to be difficult. And I can see the rotor, the brake rotor's gone in on the other side. And now without the axle in it yet, it's spinning freely. It's time for the axle from the other side. And tighten that till it's tight. Check the brakes. There it is. You have changed a bike tire from start to finish. Hopefully this gives you uh, everything you need to feel confident going out for a ride and not worrying about getting a flat. Uh, if I've missed anything or you have other questions, please comment below. If you found this video helpful, please like it. That'd be awesome. And if you want more information, um, like this kind of thing, we're helping you get outside, subscribe to our channel. That'd be great. Get outside, go for a ride. We'll see you soon.